just I'm just curious about you know Western science's resistance to acupuncture and you know when when I read in again Wikipedia acupuncture is considered a pseudoscience you know the theories and practices are not based on modern scientific knowledge well we know that uh, but scientific investigation has not found any histological or physiological evidence for traditional Chinese concepts such as qi meridians acupuncture points uh, conclusions of many trials suggest it's not effective well as someone, I mean, you and I have both, you got into it because you had such an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. I, you know, again, I was at my ropes and I was in a lot of pain and I walked out of your office and, you know, and I've had some other really powerful experiences since then. So I get that if someone hasn't had that kind of experience and science isn't providing that they, some people might have some, some reluctance or some hesitance, but why, um, I mean, do you have any thoughts on sort of Western science's view and, and, and resistance to... I, I think it's just, you know, remembering back to the first year in school because it, it's it's just such a different paradigm yep. that that you had to just set aside your Western paradigm and and accept that, oh, maybe there's, there's room for multiple paradigms. Right. And so, you know, in order to... to move forward and okay i'm going to just accept this paradigm as being v just as valid right and so yeah I, right that's that's the only way i can describe it right because at the same time that you know were you reading things like what i just read with regards to well it's not proven and right. so blah, blah, blah. Right. but at the same time again as i said earlier harvard stanford johns hopkins ucla so all of these extremely respected institutions are adopting Kaiser. it and welcoming it. You Kaiser, get, you can get it covered by your insurance. Yeah, and so it's just yeah. it's just kind of interesting. And I yeah. think it must come come down to that. Just the different if you're looking at something just within this certain box, you can't necessarily realize well that you can still look at that same thing through this other lens, right? Mm -hmm. And that it's just as legitimate. But it's just and one thing, going back to the web that has no weaver, which we mentioned at the beginning of the show, mm -hmm. He, so he being a Ted Kapchuk, Kapchuk, Kapchuk thank you, mm -hmm. the, uh, the author of the book. So this is just a classic book on acupuncture and Chinese medicine in general, yeah. I guess. It's used in the schools as a textbook. It's used in the schools. Yeah. Okay. So that book, he says, the tendency of Chinese thought is to seek out dynamic functional activity rather than to look for the fixed somatic structures, i.e. body parts or parts of the body that perform the activities. So the tendency of Chinese thought is to seek out dynamic functional activity rather than to look for the fixed somatic structures that perform the activities. Because of this, the Chinese have no system of anatomy comparable to that of the West. So that's what we just got done saying. Yeah, and, and what I was mentioning or, or mentioned in my bio too, this, this, the concept of functional medicine is now making its way into Western medicine. Mm -hmm. So it's just within the last decade probably that that, that same concept of let's look at the functionality of the, of the Western organs and the, you know, how, how do you, you go upstream uh, and support the immune system uh, by providing appropriate macro and micronutrients so that the, it can write itself versus looking for the silver bullet of one pill that's going to solve it all. That's, right. you know, so I think what there, there's now a little bit of opening in, in Western medicine to, to accept this, this broader uh, view.